In every election I've ran for, I was either told I was too young, I, there's too many Asian, we don't need any more. We've never had a woman, we don't need a woman. So in every step, because there wasn't someone before me that looked like me, I was a trailblazer. And being a trailblazer itself, it has not been easy. Uh, city Council, I was the first woman in 35 years, and the first Asian American woman, and the first Vietnamese American woman. Then I head into the county supervisor. I was the first woman, the first Asian American, and the youngest to this day at the age of 30. And then when I went over to the state senate, I was the first Vietnamese American senator in the country. Uh, and today, I'm the first woman in the 72nd Assembly District as well. So they're changing again now? I thought they're gonna make it official on the 20th. I've been blessed to be able to continue one office after another in this area while most Republicans can't. So in every election I'm in, it's never an easy election. Okay, <laughs> but A prominent state legislator said this to me, and he pointed at me. This is a reservation line, Janet. You cross this line, we will make sure you will starve to death out there and we will come after you for the rest of your life. And he has kept that promise. So we're gonna go and meet with the Bosa Chica Conservancy and a lot of the nonprofit that help serve and preserve the ecological system in Orange County. Um, it's important because a little over a month ago, we just had an oil spill in Orange County. Uh, our Orange County coast is extremely important to our community. So today we're gonna be meeting with um, four nonprofits and the partnership between the state the city and these nonprofits is very important. Hi! Hi! Good morning! Uh, with California Fish and Wildlife. It matters greatly because when the beach is closed down, it affects our economy here. Now, I'd like to just say welcome to all of the uh, members of the various NGOs of uh, being here today to meet with you. I really appreciate everybody being here because given with this oil spill, I thought it was, you know, critical, it was perfect timing when you reach out to our office too. We need to know what to do in terms of legislation for this coming year to make sure this never happens again. We all are now involved and want to make sure that we have the nonprofits, the state, the city, all of us in coordination so that we know where we need to protect, what needs to be protected, and information are free flowing for all the entities. You know, we've got a bill package um, that we're working on right now. And, and several more ideas that we have that's actually in the works within the last 48 hours. <laughs> but we're gonna be introducing that, and as you know, I'm also on the Assembly Select Committee of Orange County Oil Spill. And as you know, members of that committee, we're gonna be looking at what happened, how did it happen, where are we today, where are we gonna to be tomorrow, and how are we gonna protect it. There was an article recently of a gentleman who was in his 90s, and he's been walking there every morning. Even to today, he's using his walker. Uh, so it's, it's important for our town and the residents here. Uh, and so that's why when I mentioned when we needed help through the cleanup, thousands and within like 48 hours volunteer. And most of those were all from Orange County and not just our district. That shows you how important our coastal is to all of Orange County and statewide. I really appreciate everybody being here because this itself is protecting today and the future of it. Let's keep it going so the children, right. my grandkids, my great great grandkids can enjoy it as well. It's very important for me being around in my district and community, meeting with individuals, businesses, or in individual leaders, because that helps me to understand what's going on, because they're really on the grounds and they understand what's going on. And when I have the opportunity to be able to come back, I meet with them so that I can understand those issues and see if I can help. Yeah, so please have some tea. Jamai. Jamai. 
uh, assembly member uh, Janet have done so much for the community and she works really hard. I have known um, her work for, for so many years and, and uh, we're thankful that uh, she's there to help us. So kind of a good update. This year, the governor gave us money to fund SB Tam Tam. So next year, we will form a committee so then we can finish up SB 895 and we also extended it for five more years. And I'm excited, you know, because... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I've been so honored um, to have been given the privilege of representing the people of the 72nd Assembly District. It's overwhelming, but just coming from my background, it's just amazing that this country has been able to give someone like me an opportunity. Um, there's no representation in communist Vietnam. The Vietnam War started in the 50s. Um, U.S. involvement got more aggressive and more involved into the 60s. And of course, April 30th, 1975, the fall of Saigon created a mass exodus of refugees leaving the country because most of our family were in the military. And so they were seeking people like my father to head into re-education camp. To us, it's not a re-education camp. We call them concentration camps because it's not about re-educating my father. It's about making sure that they understand that communism has taken over. So that's when my parents decided that we had to escape. We had to leave Vietnam. Remember, leaving the country is called treason. You're escaping the country. So you would be prosecuted, executed. So we escaped to America, to California. I was five years old. In 1981, actually during Christmas, I didn't speak any English. We were very poor. We won welfare. We won food stamps. Uh, our Christmas gift came from church. Uh, our food came from church as well, and our clothes came a lot from the Salvation Army and other thrift shop. I, I've got a picture of me wearing snow boots, boys' suit to school, because I just wore what I was given. I've been able to reflect back of what my parents did. Their sacrifice was unbelievable for us because the decision that they made to escape not knowing if we would make it. When you're done eating, take this with you in your backpack. Okay. Uh, having my own two children, I wouldn't know what to do if I was put in that position. I'll wait for you. I'm not gonna leave without you. But they knew risking their family in search of freedom and democracy was a better chance for us to live than to stay in Vietnam. Hi, Jenny. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. So, you know, a lot of stuff that we do, we can't do without the right staff. Hi, I have your schedule here. Oh, thank you. Because our job is very difficult. And so... I get to go out there and do what I do well is because I have a great team behind us. And then Monday, we're going to drop off the toys okay. um, at the base. Okay. And we've got, what, about 10, 20 kids that we're helping or maybe yeah, more? Yeah, around 20 more. or more. Uh, do we have Santa, maybe? Hopefully? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay, for the perfect. Kids. Okay, perfect. So one of the great things that I've been doing for almost a decade now is we've been able to team up with different organizations to give out toys to children during the holiday. Wow, that's a, toy for the kids. Oh, exciting. that's exciting. And I remember growing up, Christmas gifts for us came from church or it came from nonprofits. Well, thank you again for helping us. And so I want to make sure that no child in my district goes without a gift. And the community has been so generous. Thank you so much. In the end, I just want to give back. Other people have given to me, and that's why I get to be here. So if I can help that next family, that's what we're here for. And so the least I could do is to give back to the country that's given my family so much. In our family, we had three choices, doctor, lawyer, engineer. So I sought to be a doctor. I actually wanted to be an obstetrician, gynecologist. To work around the clock, I like to be able to bring life into the world, uh, being able to help 
And so I went off to UC Irvine as a bio major and wanting to pursue biology uh, to um, head into med school. So my second year in college, I had to take some social science classes to meet my social science credit. And so I took this class around community politics. And the gentleman was a visiting professor, and he was the chairman of the Orange County Board of Supervisors. I had no clue what the supervisors did. Uh, don't even know what they are. And so after class, I thought to myself, he sounds important, so maybe if I can intern with him, get a recommendation letter for med school, it might help make my application unique. And through that internship, I realized that I wanted to go in the political arena because I wanted to serve. I went to my parents and told them, and they go, wait a minute, we escaped the government, now you wanna be one of them. It hit home to me because in Vietnam, government doesn't work for the people. So I made sure that I always keep in mind to making sure my parents know that government can work for the people. Actually, my bill package it's gonna be pretty extensive this year. And so something that I always am reminded, what I do today will be remembered in the future and how other will be able to take my position and serve. And that we, as public servant, we start with the heart. We serve with the heart and making sure that the people we represent are the people. What, Tony? And that's what puts a smile to what I do every day. And I tell my children about the Vietnam story. And they understand why I fight and do what I do. And they understand why when mommy gets angry in the sense that I'm gonna fight and I'm not gonna let it go because that's what built our country. It's really surreal for me every time I go into the American Legion Hall, given my family's background in the military and how much the U.S. servicemen and women means to my family personally. My father served in the South Vietnam Army. Decades later, my brother, a United States Marine, goes to Iraq. I never went to the military, and so I chose to go into the government side. And with that promise to myself personally is that our military family will be protected and they are always one of my priorities in terms of issues. And so it, it was really nice to be able to catch up uh, with a lot of our veterans and just to hear their story. I'm still very proud that I served our country when it was a time when they were asking us to go. Very proud of that. Um, because when I came home my, in my little hometown, they treated us as, as a hometown hero. And uh, had it not been for Vietnam, I probably would not have been able to become a firefighter for the county of Los Angeles. And all the time that I was there, a, a lot of it had to do uh, from that training in the military. And um, I think one of the things that really hits home for me one time, I, I knew we were helping the South Vietnamese, but it never really hit home for me until about 11 years ago, out of this small post right here, we hosted an American Legion Riders Convention for the state of California. And uh, there was a little hotel room across the street here where a lot of the people that came from Northern California stayed. And uh, a Vietnamese American, who's I guess his parents or maybe him had come from South Vietnam, I don't really know that part of it. He saw these guys there, asked them what they were doing, a, a, a Vietnam, Vietnamese American, and he paid for all these guys' room and thanked them for uh, trying to save his country. And I was already an old man then. But, uh, but I remember, I'll never forget that. To me, that was the first time that I had ever heard of the South Vietnamese thanking us, but it hit, hit home a lot more for me at that time than it ever had before. But uh, that's my story. How do you feel about the Vietnam veterans? And I mean, I know it was a long war that when the Vietnam veterans came back was just not right, but how do you feel about them? Oh, no, I don't know if you heard. So they were gonna honor Tom Hayden in the Capitol. For those who serve in the Vietnam War, you remember Tom Hayden? Yes, yeah, communist. Yeah, they were gonna honor him. 
I have to disagree with them because they think he's a hero. I don't necessarily think that. Senator Wynn. Thank you, Mr. President. Kính thưa các vị thượng nghị sĩ và đồng hương. I spoke first in Vietnamese. Just a few words, but they heard Hayden. Tom Hayden, cho Cộng sản Việt Nam. So everybody stopped and looked at me. The millions of the Vietnamese and thousands of Vietnamese refugees who die in seeking for freedom and democracy. And I kept on talking. They shut down my mic. I choose to step out of the chamber. Senator Wen, you are out of order. If you can please take a seat. Senator Wen, please take a seat. You are out of order. So I get louder and louder. I'm just still reading my speech. I'm ignoring all the noises around me. Sen Sergeants, please remove Senator Wen from the chamber. Have her removed immediately. The chief called another sergeant and they both dragged me off the floor. Sergeants, please remove Senator Wen. She is out of order. If it wasn't for the Vietnam vets, the two million refugees Vietnamese would not be in this country. My family would not even exist today if you didn't believe what democracy and freedom is. That's why you see Vietnamese Americans, Vietnamese refugees are very diehard, freedom lover, democracy, always honoring the red, white, and blue. Uh, because we know what could have happened if you weren't there for us. What is actually really nice being able to represent this community in my district is that we do have a Vietnam War Memorial. There aren't any memorial that I'm aware of that includes a statue of both the American soldier standing side by side with the former South Vietnam soldier. It's always very tearful for me when I'm there because it reminds me of my uncle who was executed before the fall of Saigon. My father who fought in thousands and tens of thousands of Vietnamese soldiers who fought to try to make sure that their country would be free. And the millions of Vietnamese refugees who had to fled Vietnam after the fall of Saigon. Being able to serve in the last almost two decades now, um, I get to hear a lot of stories. Um, stories of generals, admirals, you know, um, commissioners, you name it, of what happened during the war and what happened to them when they came here. These stories are so touching. What's going on now is that that generation are slowly passing away. And I want to make sure that the next generation, and not just my children, not just Vietnamese Americans or Vietnamese refugees, but I want other children to know why we are here, why we love this country so much, and why we fight for her. And, and to know that these stories needs to be told. You know, I was able to make a bill in California that we would be able to have a Vietnam War model curriculum in the next few years so that that can be allowed to be taught in the high school or any time from K to 12, any time the Vietnam War is taught, those stories can be brought in to the conversation. From this little Vietnamese refugee girl to those who serve, especially in the Vietnam War, thank you and welcome home. It's actually very heartwarming and truly an honor to be able to continue to just serve and knowing the issues that help our community. Because my job, I've always hoped that what I do is one day can affect the next Janet win. You can be poor on welfare, food stamp, and then 30 years later, I get to step my foot in front of the capital of the state of California. It can't happen anywhere else. Only in America are those opportunities allowed for people like me.